Oh, look at the rocks. Oh. Hey there, rock stars. Michael Stone here, standing behind a beautiful, big outcrop of the Navajo sandstone. So, the Navajo sandstone is probably one of the biggest and more diverse deposits in all of the park. You can see 200 to 300 feet of the Navajo throughout most of Zion and Zion Canyon. As the name implies, the Navajo sandstone is a sand deposited stone where little pieces of sand come together and they get pushed and squished until they lithify into a solid piece of rock. The cool thing about the, about the Navajo sandstone in particular is that it is a part of one of the biggest dune fields, one of the biggest paleo dune fields in the entire world. It's an ancient desert that dates back to 240 to 350 million years ago where giant, giant dunes like the Sahara Desert were pushing their way, slowly being pushed by the wind across Montana, across Utah, across Arizona and Colorado. Key pieces of evidence that we point to to indicate this is a dune field are the cross beds behind me. You can see kind of these angled deposits running across. And that is a surefire sign that you are looking at dunes, whether it's a sand dunes on a desert or sand dunes on the beach, deposits will look very similar to what you see behind me. And these are um, caused by the dunes being pushed across the desert. And as they're being pushed, sand rolls down the side of the dune in an angle. It sits at an angle and, and more sand rolls over, more sand rolls over, squishes and pushes and lithifies it. And then suddenly the wind direction will change and the sand that's locked like in a direction pointing one way will stay that way and suddenly the dune on top will push another direction and deposit um, sand angled in a different directions and that's how you get that crisscross pattern is literally dan dunes being pushed across in different directions as wind has changed thousands and thousands of times millions and millions of years ago fascinating stuff crazy stuff and it's happening right now we're live this is Rock Talk. See y'all later. Hi everybody, Michael Stone yet again with some cool rocks. Let's talk about it. So look over here, you can see some pretty stereotypical cross bedding that I've been talking about. You've got, you know, the dune direction it's pushing, it's pushing, it's pushing the sand this way, it's pushing it this way. And it's the sand gets deposited on the leeward side of the dune. You get, you get these deposits right here, these lines, these lines of sand gets, gets pushed over. And then up here, Way up here, you can see this line right here, is a change in direction. So the, it was getting pushed this way, but now the sand's getting pushed in a different direction. It's not quite, it's, it's still kind of going in this direction, but the angle isn't quite the same. Maybe instead of going directly this way, it was more, it was more of a, 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 a you know, that, that kind of thing. I wanted to talk about these other planar features here. These things running across. You can see it goes all the way down across the face here. Now, this was not formed when this was a dune. This is a completely different feature that was formed when the rock was already set, already lithified, already been squished down and set. And then at some point, probably during the uplift of this entire area, the uplift of the entire Colorado Plateau, something broke, something fractured, and the rock split. And you have just a little, a little gap, just a tiny little gap that forms. And in that gap, you have liquid, you have hot, pressurized water loaded with minerals like calcite or some other water-soluble mineral that then fills these cracks and solidifies, lith lithifies, and then after everything is uploaded, uplifted, it erodes away um, all the other rock and we get to see what happened underneath. So it's a cool secondary feature added here after millions of years.